Hey guys, it's Michelle with Sweet Pea Farm NY and today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about spinning. It's something I don't talk about much on the channel. I've talked a lot about farming and sheep and needle felting, but spinning fiber is another love of mine and I know a lot of you have asked questions about it and so I thought today I would share some info with you. So before you start spinning, um, my biggest recommendation is to go on to interweave.com and I'll leave a link to this below. They have a directory for sp spinning guilds in your area and you can find a group that meets usually on a monthly basis that gets together. Um, they'll have everything from seasoned spinners to veteran spinners, people who spin wool, people who spin alpaca, people who spin on a drop spindle, people who are brand new to spinning, you name it. Usually it's the whole gamut. I haven't been to a group that has just been like professional spinners the whole time. So um, it's essential to just go and talk to other people, see what's available in your area for resources, see what opportunities there are to try out different wheels because there are so many styles and manufacturers of spinning wheels that you just will be overwhelmed. And unless someone gifts you a spinning wheel, like I have been gifted several from my father, then you want to try out as many as you can before you make the commitment to buy one because they're not a cheap investment most of the time. Sometimes you can get good deals and you can buy one for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, sometimes they're a lot of money. So you want to make sure that you try out as many as possible before you make the commitment. So going to a guild is a great opportunity because most guild members are more than happy to let you sit down and treadle on their wheel, see how it feels, see if it's a great you know fit for you or if it's not because that could save you a lot of heartache in the long run. Uh, another situation that you need to think about is do you want a regular wheel that you're going to be mostly spinning with at home or do you want a travel wheel? I'm going to show you guys in a minute but they make you know regular wheels that are intended to be at your house. You know you can move them around your house but they're not really intended to be thrown over your shoulder and taken on the road and then they make styles that are very compact and lightweight that you literally just put in a bag and throw over your shoulder to take to wherever you're going. Farm, I take them to farmer's markets or the fair or whatever just to be productive. I hate sitting idle, so it's great to have it with me so that I can be doing something still. Uh, some people prefer to try drop spindling before uh, they begin spinning on a wheel, and that's a really inexpensive way to get into spinning, and that's totally awesome if that's something you're interested in. I personally hated the fiddliness of it and put it down the first time I tried it. I have no interest in drop spindling. I know people that love it. I know people that take it everywhere and it's like their thing and that's great. Everybody's different, but I just did not personally enjoy drop spindling. And as far as productivity goes, it just takes me way less time to spin on a wheel to get a skein of yarn because you have to figure you're going to spin a single which is the first time you spin the, the the wool then you take that single and either ply it with another single so two ply or you can three ply it which is what I do I three ply it on itself Navajo plying some people will take three different bobbins of singles and ply them together for whatever so it's a long process and by doing it on a drop spindle it's even longer some people just enjoy the process of drop spindling and that's totally cool. If you do or you think you will, then try it out because why not? But it's just not my thing. So I'm going to talk mostly about spinning on a wheel today. So once you've gone to the guild and you have tried out several different wheels and you find something that is totally a fit for you, you feel like you love it or, or a family of wheels that are options, your next best bet is to hit Craigslist, Facebook, and Ravelry. Check out the listings that people have for sale because buying your wheel secondhand is going to be way more beneficial and inexpensive. You'll usually get extra bobbins that maybe would cost more than if you bought it brand new. And you can usually get it for a fairly decent price. And if people aren't willing to ship, sometimes people are willing to pony them across wherever they need to travel to get to you via fiber festivals or... Um, conventions or something else so there's always you know where there's a will there's a way so I know this because my dad's done it hundreds of times my dad has several spinning wheels a lot of them have come to us in like really interesting ways and another great opportunity to chime in on is finding local fiber festivals to you because a lot of times there's wheel dealers people who sell major craft or sell 
uh, Spinolution or all different kinds of wheels and you can go and try them out there. Uh, a lot of times they'll have specials for the show and they're for sale right then and there. And if you haven't been able to find a used one, then that's a great opportunity. Another great reason to go to a fiber festival is because they're a blast and you can find tons of options of fiber uh, to spin. So some people enjoy spinning their own fiber, which is what I got into it for. Some people enjoy spinning colorful fiber, which I love. Some people just love to spin gray like my dad. Everybody's different. So definitely um, going to a fiber festival, you get to see tons of varieties of fleeces, Corydale, Rambouillet, Merino, you name it. And it gives you like a hands-on uh, ability to feel each kind of fiber and see what appeals to you. So some people die and I feel like it leaves the fiber tacky. So if you were to order it online and got it, then you'd be upset. So the fiber festival, you can actually feel it and it's great. So I'm going to go move over and show you guys some of my wheels, some different wheels I have and what I feel is the best you should do to get started. So this wheel is my Merlin Tree Road Bug. It's the first wheel I ever got. It is a single treadle and it is very simple. Instead of the wheel going right or left, it goes backwards and forwards. So it's very easy for a beginner to remember, you know, when you're, you're initially twisting the thread, the wheel needs to be going away from you or forwards. When you're plying, it goes towards you or vice versa. However you depend to do it, it's different on all parts of the country or all parts of the world, I should say. But, um, very simple to learn on. I thought it's what worked for me. I had tried to start out on a different wheel that my dad gave me initially and was getting really frustrated. And one Thanksgiving, my dad brought this over to me and it just clicked. So this is the first wheel I actually spun yarn on. So this is the first wheel that I was given. It's an Atkins double treadle. It is not a travel wheel like the uh, Merlin Tree Road Bug I showed you just a minute ago, but it's a great um, beginner wheel. It does spin right or left for single plying. You ply, you spin one way and then you spin the wheel the opposite way to ply it. So you're not just unspinning your thread. And um, this wheel was a great wheel. I, I don't love it as much as I used to. Chloe actually uses it most of the time. So it's a great beginner wheel, very comfortable, very easy to use. It has a Lazy Susan right there, which is what is holding the bobbins on the on the wheel itself. And so it's just a great unit all in one. This wheel is my Major Craft Susie. It is definitely my wheel of choice. It is my everything wheel. I do all of my spinning on it now, unless I'm traveling and I take the road bug out somewhere, but I do lots and lots of spinning on this wheel. It is uh, Major Craft Susie. My dad gave it to me when he bought uh, Major Craft Susie Pro and it came with all sorts of goodies because it was my dad's. This little wheel is a Wee Peggy uh, travel wheel that my dad had given Chloe to take on the road and it's worked out well for her. It's really cute. It kind of looks like a boat steering wheel and um, again, it treadles like my travel wheel to keep the wheel going forward or backward, but this one is a double treadle, so it's really um, good to use the leverage when you have little feet like Chloe does. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick introduction into my advice for finding the right wheel and my wheels. In the next episode about spinning, I'm gonna have my dad go over the parts of the wheel and then get us started on putting the fiber on the wheel. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't already, make sure that you click the subscribe button and the bell below so that you can stay up to date when our new videos come out. And if you have any questions that you want answered in the next video, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. We love interacting and um, providing information for people who need it. So have a great rest of your day, guys. Thanks so much.